Tunasherekea nini? Huyo ni si mwingine bali ni Brother Dan. Brother Dan you are most welcome. God is good. Allow me to take you through 50 years. Starting from 10th of February 1972 to 10th of February 2022. It's a long, long journey, but I'll, I'll try to make it brief and I request you just to be patient so that we can appreciate what we are uh, celebrating today. First of all, I would like us to, for those who may not know very much about the Benedictines, who are the Benedictines? The Benedictine Muratsim was founded by our father, St. Benedict. And St. Benedict was born in the year 480 in a small town of Nashia. During his studies in Rome, he decided to retire into the mountainous solitude of Subiaco, fearing that his salvation will be corrupted by vices of the city. After living for three years in solitude, men were drawn to him, and he built 12 monasteries around Subiaco to accommodate them. Later, he withdrew to Monte Cassino and built a monastery where he wrote the illustrious rule for the beginners. The origin of missionary Benedictine of St. Ochili, that's our... The missionary Benedictine congregation of St. Ochili was founded on 29th of June 1884 by Father Andreas Amulain, a Swiss monk from Berlin Abbey in Germany. And the vision of Andreas Amlain was for the missionary monks to evangelize Africa south of the Sahara. And that's how they came to Tanzania. The first missionaries from the congregation of St. Otilia, comprising of one priest, nine brothers, and four sisters, arrived in Zanzibar in 1888. And the first monastery was started at Pugu on 7th of February, 1888. And there after followed uh, many foundations. In the army of Lindy, that was in 1931, which was divided into armies of Danda and Peramijo. And the first African Benedictine monastery was started in Liganga near Peramijo, and was then transferred to Hanga in 1960. So for all those 70 years, the Benedictine missionaries from Germany, Switzerland, and the USA were actively involved in the field of primary and secondary education, health and trade schools, home economics, agriculture development and training of African clergy in Tanzania. 
and it was after this successful work that the monks of Pelamio Andi felt that it was time to take up the challenge of new foundation which turned out to be Kenya. So these Benedictine uh, missionaries, they came... <laughs> After invitation of the Light Reverend Emilio Gilo, who was the Bishop of Eldoret, these monks from Peramijo came to work to Kenya and started their work in Kerio Valley. And the first group of Peramijo monks they arrived in the Diocese of Eldoret on 10th of February 1972. And they took over the responsibility of evangelizing, doing evangelization among the Marakwits. And they opened the first mission in Chesokos, which was opened by Ambote Bishop Eberhard Spence of Pelamijo. And thereafter, the first group of missionaries settled in Chesokos. Then they had the station of Chesoy, Aro, and therefore, <laughs> like Endo, Ebogut, Kamosol, Kabijay, Kapkemich, where we are still present. And that was the, the last foundation of the Benedictine monks in Keriobari. Thereafter, the Benedictine monks of Luaraka which is located on the superhighway, was an offshoot of Kerio Valley. And the servant of God is Eminence, the late Cardinal Milo Sotunga of the Abdusus of Nairobi, lasting for missionary predicting spirituality and presence in his diocese, had for a long time persuaded and whatever had spice of Pelamijo to take up the challenge of implanting predicting monastic in the capital city of Nairobi. Therefore, in 1977, a group of Benedictine fathers from the Abbey of Pelamijo met in a lobby, chaired by Abotla Batidul, with the aim of opening a new monastery in the capital city of Nairobi. And this led to the opening of St. Benedict Monastery, a dependent house of Pelamijo Ambi, and St. Benedict Parish in 1978. This of Pelamijo later on became a simple priory in 1979, with Father Android being the superior and Saint Mauro, Mauro and Father Mauro <laughs> being the first parish priest of the new open Saint Benedict Parish. And they are to cater for the spiritual needs of the Madar Islam as well as pastoral work in the survey of Kenya, National Youth Service, and General Service Unit of the police. After successfully opening the priory of Nairobi, it was later on became a provincial priory and Father Pius Murubaba became the first provincial prior. The monastery of Nanyuki, which is located in the foot of uh, Mount Kenya and the patronage of our lady of Mount Kenya, was started in 1978. And later on, this later on became a of our community. And we remember the first candidates who became novices were Brother Boniface Ojaka, the late, Innocent Omita, Placido Kamarawa, and the late Father Lemon Tamari. And therefore, from Nanyuki, the officiate, let alone, was transferred here in Tigoni. And it's let alone, the Nanyuki community gave birth to African Bible on the ground. The Prince of Peace, and where we are now seated here in Tigoni, which is in Tigoni, the sub county of Lemulu and uh, Kiabu County. The construction work of this community started in February 1987 and was finalized in the same year where the novices from Nanyuki with Father Maur, uh, Magnus Lau came and settled here in the monastery. And the actual construction of the building started in 1988 and the monastic chapel was opened in 1991 on the Feast of Epiphany by the late Cardinal Maurice Otunga. And on 20th of January 1992, the provincial priory was transferred from St. Benedict Monastery to the Prince of Priest Benedictine Monastery here in Tigoni. And Father Magnus Lau was elected the second provincial prior. And the monastery of Tigoni was officially opened in 1993. 
It was during the tenure of a prior, John Baptist, at the Convention prior, that the man's requested for consideration for the monastery to be elevated into a Convention priory to an ambi. And the elevation of John Ambe was on 21st of September 2020. And it was followed by an election where Abbot John Baptist Oise Emai was elected as the first abbot of Prince of Peace, predicting Ambe Tigoni. And indeed, this was a very great moment for a community of Tigoni after being a provincial priory for a period of 32 years. Recently, we started Benedictine presses in the Diocese of Massabit with the opening of the first parish, St. Peter the Fisherman, Ilaret. The foundation of Ilaret community in the Diocese of Massabit. The parish and the community of this parish are located in the northeastern soul of Lake Trukana, which is occupied by the Dashanas people. And St. Peter the Fisherman was officially opened on the 29th of June 2005, with Father Florian being the first parish priest. Before I end, let me just make a, a just enlighten to you or to share with you the major contribution to the growth and development of this monastery here in Tigoni. It is important to just briefly recognize some of our rich and living heroic monks who have contributed tremendously to the development of our army. The late Abbot Eberhard Space and Abbot Lava Tidulo Peramiho were very instrumental in the foundation of our army here in Kenya. Abbot Abbot Space responded, Abbot Space, Let's put to the quick voice of eventually monks in the Diocese of Edelet by the late Emilio Jewe. At the same time, Abbot Labat Dool later accepted and started a formation house in Nanyuki, which became the origin of the first monks who came to Tigoni. The late Cardinal Maurice Otunga will always be remembered for his contribution to the initial development of Benedictine monastic life in the Diocese of Nairobi for not only inviting them, but assisting them to settle, especially in our current location here in our army. We also want to recognize the first prior of the civil prior of St. Benedict Monastery at Ruaraka, the late prior Andrei Stam, for the prior Pius Mulbaga, the first convention of St. Benedict Monastery. And we also want to recognize the effort of Father, late Father Magnus Lau, the convention prior who contributed tremendously to the growth and development of our monastery farm here in Tigoni. Prior Klaus Brown Reuter was very instrumental in the growth and development of the VTPC, the acquisition of the land here in Tigoni, and also the Madale 4A slum upgrading project. With this brief history, that is the reason why we want to celebrate today recognizing the great effort of our pioneer missionaries and the current activities that the Benedictines are doing here in Kenya, as I tell you, Asante sana, Brother Dan. So with that in mind, Ninaomba Wote to Simame, let's all arise, we begin our Mass. Right Reverend Father Abbott, you are most welcome to preside over the Mass. Walikuwa na mtu wa mwenendo wa heshima, benedictum barikiwa kwa neema na jina, mbaya liyacha nyumba na mambo yake, babae, akitamani kupendeza mungu peke yake, Haka kuatilia desturi za mwenendo mtakatifu. Wajina la baba na la mwana na la roho mtakatifu. Mwana wenanyi. Dugu zangu tuliyosikia katika historia kupi ya kwamba sababu ilio tuleta hapa leo Yuko mshukuru mungu kwa ajili ya wema wake aswa kwa shirika letu ya mtakatifu benedikto hapa Kenya. Na tunaendelea kuomba baraka zake ili atuongoze, atutangulie kwa yote ambayo ya kufanya na tunayo ya kusudia kuyafanya 
ili kuleta ufalme wake karibu na watu. Naposali na kuendelea kufanya kazi zetu naendelea kumtambua Mungu kwa yale yote ambayo ametujalia kuyafanya. Kwa hiyo tunapokusanyika hapa ni jambo la shukuru, jambo la kutambua uwepo wa Mungu katika maisha yetu na katika maisha yetu kama wabenediktini hapa Kenya. Kwa hiyo nyakati ambazo tumekosa kumtambua Mungu tukumbuke tujute tupate kujiweka tayari kuadhimisha mafumbo haya matakatifu. Na muungamia Mungu mwenyezi.
Awe mwalimu marufu wa shule ya utumishi wa Bwana. Tunaomba utujalie tusipende chochote zaidi kuliko wewe. Ili kwa moyo radhi twende mbio katika njia ya amri zako. Kwa njia ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo mwanao. Anaishi na kutawala nawe. Katika umoja wa roho mtakatifu Mungu daima na milele Thank you. 
be taken by the choir, will be led by the choir. The second reading will be taken by Sister Anwarite OSB of the Missionary Benedictine Sisters of Sacred Heart Priory Karen. And the gospel will be proclaimed by the deacon of the day, Deacon Leo OSB. You're most welcome. A reading from the book of Proverbs. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver, and search for it as for hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and preserving the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. The word of the Lord. wimbo wa katikati maneno ya kitikio nitamtukuza bwana kila wakati nitamtukuza bwana Oh, 
katika shida za kikote mainia bwana na wasihi muishi maisha yanayostahili miito mlioitwa muwe daima wanyenyekevu wapole na wenye saburi vumilianeni nyinyi kwa nyinyi kwa mapendo fanyeni bidii ya kuhifadhi umoja uletwao na roho kwa kuzingatia amani iliyo kati yenu kuna mwili mmoja na roho mmoja kama vile tumaini mliloitiwa na Mungu ni moja kuna bwana mmoja imani moja ubatizo mmoja kuna Mungu mmoja na baba wa wote ambaye yuko juu ya wote afanya kazi katika yote na yuko katika yote neno la bwana maana hao watashibishwa Injili takatifu ilivyoandikwa na Luka Ulitokea ubishi kati ya hawa mitume kuhusu nani miongoni mwao 
aliyefikiriwa kuwa mkuu kuliko wengine Yesu akawaambia wafalme wa mataifa watawala watu wao wa mabavu nao waitwa uitwa wafadili wa watu lakini isiwe hivyo kati yenu lazima awe mdogo wa wote na, na alie kiongozi lazima awe kama mtumishi kwa maana ni nani aliye mkuu yule anayeketi mesani kula chakula ama yule anayemtumikia bila shaka ni yule anayeketi mezani kula chakula hata hivyo mimi niko hapo kati yenu kama mtumishi injili ya bwana wapendwa katika Kristo tumsifu Yesu Kristo God is good and all the time Leo ni siku ya pekee kwetu hapa katika basia hii ya Kristo falme wa amani Tukimshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya wema wake katika maisha yetu na kutambua uwepo wake ndani ya yale yote ambayo tuna thubutu kuyafanya na kuyaishi katika maisha yetu ya kila siku kila unapofanya sherehe ya jambo fulani ambalo labda umefanikiwa umefaulu kwa kitu fulani neno ni moja tu shukrani wanasema baada ya dhiki inafanyika baada ya dhiki sijui kama ni faraja lakini basi tu na iwe hivyo ulivyosema leo hapo kumka miaka msini ya uwepo wetu katika ya Kenya tunakumbuka wale ambao walipanda ile mbegu ya haradaki mbegu ndogo zaidi ambayo iliweza kuota na ikawa mti ambao ndege wengine wanaweza kujenga viota vyao watu wengine wanaweza kukaa chini ili kujikinga na jua au mvua Mama Teresa alivyosema ya kwamba inapaswa ufanye mambo madogo kwa upendo mkuu Sisi zote tumeitwa kufanya mambo yale madogo kwa upendo mkuu ili Mwenyezi Mungu apate kutukuka ndani ya yale yote ambayo tunayanena tunayatenda na kuyawaza Kwa hiyo sisi kama Benediktini tupo hapa leo mwaka huu kumshukuru Mungu na kutambua uwepo wake ndani ya sala zetu na kazi tunazozifanya Takatifu Benedikto alivotoweka kule mjini Roma akatembea hadi subi yako Nafikiri ni masaa mawili kutoka Roma sio kwa kutembea kwa gari masaa mawili kwa gari kama kutoka hapa mpaka nakuru zamani watu walikuwa wanatembea siku hizi hata kwa mfano mtawa kutembea kutoka pale abasiani mpaka kwenye geti inakuwa ngumu 
Sijui ni uzembe, sijui ni uze, sijui ni nini. Lakini kutokana na imani na biti aliyokuwa nayo mtakatifu Benedicto akapata kuondoka ukimbia yale ambayo yanamchepusha kutoka kumfuasa Mwenyezi Mungu ili apate kuwa katika hali ya upweke akiona ya kwamba yale ambayo yanafanyika anampelekea Mwenyezi Mungu ili apate kuyapokea na kuwabadili watu katika mienendo yao iliyokuwa sio nzuri What Benedict was running away from today we are running towards what he was running away from Yale alikuwa nakimbia sisi tunayakimbilia kutokana na maisha ya kila siku ambayo tunayaishi mu duniani tukiangalia maisha ya mtakatifu Benedicto alivyoishi unaweza fikiri ni mtu ambaye akili yake haikuwa inafanya kazi vizuri kiangalia historia yake vizuri it is a matter of persistence and consistency in faith If your faith is not consistent and persistent utaendelea utapa tapa hapa na pale unatafuta hiki leo kesho unatafuta kile ukipati basi sisi kama waamini sisi kama wafuasi wa Kristo sisi ambao tunakiri yule Kristo ambaye alitufia msalabani ili apate kutuokoa kutokana na upendo aliokuwa nao wetu sisi kupitia kwa mtakatifu Benedicto basi tunajaribu iwezavyo kidogo kidogo tukitembea katika safari hii ya imani ndani ya maombezi ya mtakatifu Benedicto kupitia kwa mwanzilishi wetu ambaye Andrea Amrain alivotoka katika basia yake huko ya Boiron akamuomba mkuu wake ya kwamba angependa kuanzisha kitu kingine kidogo kando na yale ambayo wanayaishi kila siku katika Abasia the strict observance of the rule of St Benedict in the cloister he wanted to begin something that is a bit different it is neither inside nor outside somewhere that we are living together and also doing some kind of active apostolate so yule andrea hakuwa mjinga alikuwa mtu ambaye his spirit was very strong his spirit was very strong though his body was not as strong as some of us kwa hiyo walivyoanzisha yale walitaka wayaishi maisha yale ya utawa ndani na nje ndio maana anasema ukiwa ndani uwe monaki ukiwa nje ukue apostle inside the monk outside an apostle so when you are inside how do you live your monastic life and when you are outside These days we are more outside than inside balancing that act is not very easy for us but it is possible so kwa hiyo tunapomshukuru Mungu pia tuna tunatafakari juu ya maisha yetu ili tuweze kujua ni vipi tunaweza kuendelea au kuishi tulivyo ni vipi ni kitu, kitu gani ambacho tunaweza kuboresha ni kitu gani ambacho tunaweza kubakisha ilivyo ili tuendelee kuishi hivyo tulivyo ndugu zangu katika maisha yetu ya kila siku tulivyosikia katika somo la kwanza ambalo ni neno la kwanza katika kanuni ya mtakatifu benedicto ya kwamba lazima tuwe watu wa kusikiliza sikiliza mwanangu 
Sikiliza. Listening is a gift. Listening is a virtue. Listening is a value. If you want to understand, you must listen. Kwa sababu usipo sikiliza, unaweza kusikia tu sauti. Sauti zinapita tu. Sauti ni nyingi lakini usipo sikiliza, uwezi kupata kuelewa ni sauti ipi ambayo unapaswa kuifuata. Kwa hiyo ndugu zangu, kusikiliza ni jambo ambalo inaweza kutusaidia kuishi maisha yetu jinsi tupaswavyo kuishi kila siku. Pasipo kusikiliza basi mengine yote yanakwenda mrama. Katika somo la injili tunasikia ya kwamba tunakuwa na ubishi katika maisha yetu ya kila siku. Mara nyingi tunakuwa na ubishi. Wiki hii tume tumeshuhudia maneno machache katika nchi yetu ya Kenya tuseme it has been a week of my lords and my ladies ndio wiki hii tumekuwa tukisikia my lord my ladies my lord my ladies sijui wiki ijayo tutasikia nini kwa hiyo tunaposikiliza yale ambayo kila mmoja anasema ya kwamba yeye ndiye msema kweli lazima asikilizwe listening Kuna wakati fulani unaweza kuzungumza na mtu baada ya muda fulani ana ananyanyuka anasema ulikuwa unasema nini Wewe unafikiri unamuongelesha yule mtu unamzungumzia na kusikiliza baada ya dakika mbili anakuuliza ulikuwa unasema nini That means that person was not listening to you Alikuwa anasikiliza vile anataka kukuambia Alafu ananyanyuka anasema anaanza kusema mambo yake anarudia yale ambayo ulikuwa unamwambia unashangaa vipi ulikuwa unanisikiliza kweli ama hukuelewa kwa sababu kusikiliza the effect ni kuelewa matokeo yake ni kuelewa yale ambayo unazungumziwa kwa hiyo mnaweza kuwa mnazungumza yeye wawili baadaye amuelewani tu kwa sababu unapozungumza yule mwingine asikilizi anafikiria atakavyo kukuambia hata kwenye vikao mara nyingi kuna watu mwingine anazungumza mwingine anafikiria jinsi yule mwingine anataka kusema alafu ananyanyuka anarudia yale yale ambayo mwingine anamzungumza kwenye vikao vyenu vingi hayo ndugu zangu tukiwa ndani ya Kristo tunahimizwa na mtakatifu Benedicto ya kwamba na yeye anatohoa katika Biblia neno la Mungu tumesikia katika kitabu cha Mithali asubuhi hii ya kwamba sikiliza mwanangu yasikilize mafundisho ya mwalimu wako so listening is not some kind of joke sababu mara nyingi ugomvi mwingi unatokana kwa kutokusikilizana usipomsikiliza ugomvi nyingi unatokana na hayo katika hata maisha yetu hata katika familia if you don't listen to each other you start quarreling over things which each of you understands in their own way kwa hiyo ndugu zangu tunapo sherekea siku hii tunamshukuru Mungu. Na huko kwa kutokusikilizana ndio inatuingiza katika somo la injili ubishi. Mtu anataka kuwa mkubwa. I want nani atakuwa mkubwa wakati wale wafuasi wa Yesu walikundua kwamba huyu mjamaa anaenda kufa. Wengine wakaanza kusogea sogea karibu hivyo ndivyo inakuwa katika maisha yetu ya Kristo. Ukisikia mtu fulani anaondoka katika kiti chake, wengine wanaanza kusogea hapo karibu ili wakifikiria kwamba hao ndio warithi. Ndio warithi wenyewe, 
ndio napaswa kurithi yale ambayo yule mwingine yuko karibu kuyaacha kwa ndugu zangu sisi katika maisha yetu ya kila siku katika familia takatifu benedicto anatuhimiza kwamba mtu aishi jinsi atakavyo Mungu jinsi Kristo anavyosema kwamba wafalme wa mataifa watawala watu wao kwa mabavu na huitwa wafadhili wa watu sponsors wafadhili unaweza kumpinga mfadhili wako ni ngumu kumpinga mfadhili wako ndio maana Kristo anatuonya anatuhimiza ya kwamba lazima tuwe watu wa kusikiliza na kuyafanya yale ambayo tunapaswa kuyafanya bila kujipiga kifua ya kwamba mimi ndiye nafaa kufanya mambo fulani mimi ndiye nafaa kuwa kiongozi hapo mimi ndiye nafaa mimi ndiye nafaa ndio maana utakosa amani utakosa utulivu utakosa mambo mengi kwa sababu unatafuta tafuta ukubwa ambao haikusaidii kuishi maisha yako ya kila siku. Kwa tunapoishi maisha haya changamoto ambazo wamishonari walizipitia kabla watulie waanze kusema kwamba sasa tuanzishe maisha yetu ambayo ni ya kimonaki tukiendelea kufanya umishonari wetu inafaa ukaa chini na kutafakari askofu Eberhard Spitz alifu aruhusu wafike hapa Kenya na marehemu Abbot Lambert Dor alivofuatilia ili waanzishe maisha haya hapa Nairobi kwa mwaliko wa tumishi wa Bwana Morris Michael Utunga na muombea Mwenyezi Mungu muone huruma alivo na alipo Tunawashukuru wote ambao wamechangia katika kukua maisha yetu ya hapa kwa sababu walipoanzisha maparokia kule Rio Valley hawakuwa naishi pamoja kila mmoja alianza kaanza huko na huko ndio baadaye they consolidated themselves and came back to monastic life according to the spirit that Andreas Amrai started in the year 1882 kwa ndugu zangu tunapo fanya sherehe hii ya kumbukumbu ya miaka hamsini pia tunajiangalia sisi wenyewe maisha yetu yanatuelekeza wapi ndugu zangu watawa wa hapa Basia ndugu zangu watawa wa Sacred Heart Priory Nairobi na watawa wengine wote ni nafasi ya kutafakari unapovuka mahala fulani unaangalia nyuma wakati mwingine ukiangalia the bridge which you crossed if you are told to cross there the second time you will not there because it may not be possible lakini kwa msaada wa Mungu na nguvu za Mungu ametuwezesha tufike hapa tulipo tumeyapitia mengi tumesikia mengi tumefanya mengi ni Mungu tu ndiye anayeweza kutuongoza na kutulipa kwa yale yote ambayo tumejaribu kuyafanya kwa ajili ya utukufu wake. Tumesikia kwamba nyumba hii ilifanywa priori na piti na ikawa hivyo kwa miaka 32. Kuanzia mwaka wa 1988 
mwaka elifu moja tisamia elifu mbili na ishirini kwa nini kwa sababu safari yenyewe ilikuwa safi tu safari ya polipoli kama mzee kombe ya kuangalia hapa na pale tunakwenda wapi tunateleza hapa na pale tumepitia changamoto nyingi tambo tuombe ya kwamba sisi tunapaswa kuwa basia sasa kuangalia mambo mengi hata hiyo ilikuwa ngumu kwa sababu ya vichwa vingi kuangalia hapa ni kitu gani ambacho tumefanya vizuri kitu gani ambacho hatujafanya vizuri sana kitu gani ambacho tunapaswa kuboresha mahali ipi ambayo inapaswa kuendelezwa zaidi na mambo mengi ambayo yametendeka kwa miaka hii hamsini tuliokuwa hapa nchini Kenya na tunaomba Mwenyezi Mungu aendelee kutuongoza atutangulie kwa yale yote ambayo tunayofanya katika sala sababu bila sala unaweza kufanya kazi fanya kazi baadaye unaishiwa na nguvu unashindwa pa kuelekea ndio maana kila siku katika maisha yetu tunaanza siku na sala ndio aweze kutuongoza tuyatangulize yote tuyaweke mikononi mwake kila siku atuwezeshe uweza kufanya mwishowe tufikishe mahali ambapo tunaweza kufika to be fruitful is not an easy task you sleep you fall you stand you move but you have to move unless you sleep and move and sit down and say it is too painful to continue i better continue sitting you will never move tabaki hivyo hivyo na hakuna kitu unaweza kufanya katika maisha yako kwa ndugu zangu mtawa wa hapa tigoni tuombe Mwenyezi Mungu tunapotafakari juu ya miaka hii hamsini yale yote ambayo tumeyapitia tuangalie so that we are able to prioritize our life and avoid running after what benedict was running away from we are easily slipping into it unknowingly sometimes and sometimes knowingly that it is not an easy task to maintain and get focused on what our life entails as we grow together let us grow together as one unit as one component that is focusing on the salvation of souls in whichever field we are in the target is the salvation of souls and the salvation of those souls means your soul comes first tunasema kwa Kiswahili mpende jirani yako jinsi unavyo love your neighbor as you love yourself so you cannot love your neighbor if you do not love yourself so that love self love comes first then you extend what you have to your neighbor so let us pray and ask that the lord in his goodness his love in his mercy in his kindness he may continue guiding us strengthening us refocusing ourselves into the mission which amrain gave us not for ourselves but for the mission of the church we are here because of the church we are here because someone has entrusted us a responsibility to do what we ought to do and what we are supposed to do and to live in accord to what was written down by our elders by our ancestors that this is the codex that has been written down and we ought to follow it 
in the spirit of St. Benedict and in the spirit of our founder, Andreas Amra. To continue that, it takes us energy to do it. And that energy has to be consolidated. And that consolidation takes all of us to do it. Nilisema. Na imesema. Na kwamba umoja ni nguvu. Kaswahili wanasema hivyo sio. Umoja ni nini? Utengano ni nini? Rafiki yangu moja aliniambia utengano ni ujinga. Yaani mkitaka kuwa wajinga, <laughs> yaani muendelee kutengana tu. Kwa hiyo tunapoishi maisha haya na kufanya kazi aliyotuachia Mungu, God has entrusted us the responsibility through our congregation, through our community here that we have been delegated as ambassadors to bring that kingdom to the people. That the people we serve every day in our Abbey Church through prayer, because that prayer is not your personal prayer, it is the prayer of the church. You are doing it on behalf of someone, and you ought to do it faithfully, to see where kama watu wa mishara. Watu wa mishara ni kama mchungaji, mwema, Na wewe unaenda kufanya kama mtu ameajiriwa when the wolf comes you disappear from the sheep and you run to hide then the wolf takes advantage and takes away what it deems fit to take away kwa tumuombe Mwenyezi Mungu atuongoze tujiweke mikononi mwake Kijua ya kwamba moyo mtakatifu wa Yesu ndiye anayetuongoza katika maisha yetu ya kila siku na nye wa Kristu yendelee kuombeana ili maisha yetu yaendelee vizuri tukiendelea katika huduma hiyo we are servants and ambassadors of Christ we are not kings we are not coming to be served. We are coming to serve. Do your work, I do mine. Then the kingdom of God comes closer to us every day. Kila mtu akifanya jinsi atakavyo. Anavyo paswa kufanya. Maisha ya lakwenda vizuri. Lakini kwa kawaida maisha yetu ya binadamu. Sisi sote hatuwezi kuangalia njia moja kila wakati. Na hizo njia tofauti na paswa tuzilete pamoja ili zitusaidie kuona ni yepi ambayo tunapaswa kuyafanya, ni njia ipi ambayo inapaswa kufuatwa. Na sisi wote tukikaa hivyo basi maisha yetu yanakwenda vizuri. Ule ubishi wa kusema ya kwamba nani anapaswa kuwa mkubwa. wakati mwingine inakuwa ngumu kidogo kwa sababu kazi haifanyiki unashinda ukifikiria tu kwamba mimi ni chairman wa hapa ni chairman si moderator siku hizi wanaitwa moderators to avoid the word chair and man so kwa hiyo unapokuwa katika uongozi fulani na paswa kujua kazi yako ni gani sababu wakati mwingine mtu anaweza kupewa kazi anaanza kulalamika kabla hata hajafikiria kuanza hiyo kazi ila hiyo kazi ni kidogo au hiyo kazi ni nyingi sana takatifu benedicto anatuonya tu mapema anasema siji na kwa chapter gani when a man is set impossible task these days it is the opposite direction when a monk is set very little tasks 
they start complaining before they start even that little task. It becomes very difficult. Even to raise your finger to do it. Inakuwa ngumu kidogo. Kwa sababu akili yako tayari, imesha kuambia yu kazi ni kidogo na uwezi vani. Lakini Benedicto alisema, impossible task. Impossible task ni hile unaona hiya, nikifuata hii njia minta kujika kuku. Na nahimizo ya kwamba yale ambayo unaona ni magumu ya nasema wepu jaribu tu. It's good to try. It's better to try than not to try at all. So hizo changamoto ambazo tukonazo ni za kila siku na zinatusaidia kuhishi maisha yetu. And that also makes it beautiful. It makes our life beautiful. And if you don't enjoy it, then somebody will enjoy it for you. And also, we expect many things. People expect so much from us. They look at us as different people. When you are in school, as a sister, as a brother, those children don't look at you just as any other teacher. Even when you are in the hospital, what wanakuja hapu wanaona sister. Unaito sister, sister or father, sister. Oh, it is nurse. Sister, sister, or father. Did it? Zijini, brother, or father. Our good nurse. When you are nurses, the sisters. Akin, a sister, or a father, or a nurse. Why you are not going to be a father? What do you want to be a father? What do you want When you are in school, when children look at you, they look at you from a very different angle. Even the trust they have in you. You are not just a teacher, you are not just a nurse, but you are a different kind of servant in that field which you have been entrusted. Don't just be there because anyone else, when people ask, what is the difference between you and me? Where were brother Mualib, Namimi? Mlei mwalimu, tofauti yako na mimi ni gani? Siwe ni mwalimu, ndiyo. Mimi ni mwalimu, ndiyo. What is the difference? So those are the questions sometimes we need to ask ourselves and find out exactly what we live and how we live our life. Because everybody is looking at you from a certain angle. They start. Na tegemea mesimamu upande gani? Ya, ya anavyo taka kukuona na yeye anategemea kuona mambo fulani ambayo ni tofauti na yeye kwamba wewe ni mtao na yeye ni mtu mlei anategemea kuyaona mengine ambayo yasiyo ya kawaida lakini lazima tuyaishi hizo ndizo changamoto tulizo nazo na tunaishi nazo na tunatembea nazo kila siku kwa tumuombe Mwenyezi Mungu atupe nguvu tupe hekima ili tuweze kuyaishi maisha yetu na kufanya huduma ambayo tumepewa na kanisa Mwenyezi Mungu has entrusted us into that service which we offer to the people and let us do it with love with compassion with the diligence and with dedication that it requires Tuombe na nyinyi mtuombe ili tuendelee kuishi maisha hayo ambayo mtakatifu benedicto alituachia kupitia mzee wetu andrea samrai ambao wanatuombea tunaamini kwamba wanatuombea popote walipo ili tuendelee kuyaishi maisha hayo kupitia kwa maombezi yao ambao walijaribu kuishi sio eti walikuwa wamekamilika wame katika maisha yao bali na wao walitembea polepole pole, kwa unyenyekevu bila ujeuri bila kiburi na mambo mengine ambayo yanatokea wakati tunapofanya huduma yetu tunapofanya utume popote ambapo tumetumwa kwa hiyo ile kazi ambayo tumepewa na mtakatifu benedicto ni kusali na kufanya kazi ambayo tunapaswa kufanya 
kwa uadilifu na kwa uaminifu. Na yote tunayoyafanya yawe kwa ajili ya utukufu wa Mungu. Tumsifu Yesu Kristo. Naomba tuchukue muda kwa dakika moja tukae kimya tutafakari kwa hiyo homilia ambayo tumepata kutoka kwa baba abate Naomba sisi wote tusimame tukiri imani yetu. Ni wakati wa nasadiki. Baadaye kuna wale ambao wameandaliwa kwa ajili ya kutoa sala za waumini. Mwisho wa nasadiki natarajia mjongee mbele. Kwaya tafadhali Mkristu wa hapa mmoja Kuna Postland Naona Shafika One of the Tutsing Sisters CMS Jaona mmoja CWA Wakutoa sala
ndugu zangu washukrani kwa Mungu tumuombe asikilize kwa wema sala zetu kwa ujumbe wa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo Father Lord we come unto you this particular morning thanking you for the gift of life you given unto us Lord this special day Yes Lord Father we pray for the young vocations who have been called to serve you in various ways Lord may you bless them let them follow the footsteps of Saint Benedict so that in the future we can have also people who are being celebrated as Saint Benedict is being celebrated today Lord hear us For the church we thank thee O merciful God for the gift of Holy Mother the church for all gifts and graces you bestow upon us and upon the world through the church we pray for the poor may you guide your, your children on the path of truth for the clergy and the religious help them to remain firm and true to your holy word and never let worldly ambitions cloud their pure love for you Give them the grace to remain pure and humble before you and to honor thy holy presence in the Eucharist. Help and guide all those of your servants who may have grown discouraged or lukewarm in their love for you and rekindle the fire of the Holy Spirit in their souls. Please protect missionaries from all kinds of dangers and challenges that they face. Give them the strength and grace to help them withstand any persecutions they may have to endure help them to hold firm to the truth of the teachings of your son we pray for all christians associations cma cwa ycs mym and all people of who seek you with pure with humble hearts may, may they love one another and be filled with the gifts of your spirit for those who live in hostile environments to withstand persecutions in your name for the lukewarm souls and others to open their hearts to your love and become part of your family on earth O mother of salvation please pray for the catholic church to remain true to its teachings may god continue to guide and give it the grace of discernment so that it may never deny the truths contained in the bible may he give it courage strength and knowledge to impart defend and uphold faith and truth so that as many souls as possible may be brought to him lord hear us familia familia mungu baba mungu mwana mungu roho mtakatifu baba tunakushukuru tunaeni wa jina lako tunasema ni asanti maana unastahili sifa na utukufu Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya familia ambazo umetujalia. Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya familia ya kanisa Mungu Baba Mwenyezi. Tunaomba utujaze na nguvu zako na neema zako ili Mungu Baba Mwenyezi tuweze kukutumikia wewe kama familia na tuweze kuiga familia ya Maria, Yosefu na uh, Maria, Yosefu na Kristo. Kwa hayo tunaomba Let us pray for our country king, our mighty father. The glory to your name, we bring our country king into your hands. We ask for peace, love and unity, and refrain us from tribalism, ethnicity, corruption. Oh Lord, you gave us a good country king, our motherland king. May we all have time dead in our country king and bless our country king. Let's pray to the Lord. Let's pray. Angel of God, our guardian dear, to whom God love ever this day, to light and guide, to rule and guide us this day, Lord gracious, Lord gracious hear us. Lord gracious hear us. Heavenly Father, Prince of Peace, King of Peace, it's another wonderful time. We humble ourselves before you. We say thank you for free gifts of life you have given him to us, my Father. Thank you for the blessings and graces you have bestowed on our lives. Thank you for the gates of vocations in our congregation. 
especially missionary Benedictine. Lord, we pray as we continue with our discernment that you may have more vocations in order to serve you for the greater glory of your name. For this I pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the faithful departed, especially the ones of our missionary family, missionary Benedictine family, those whose shoulders we are riding on, that the good Lord may receive them, that the good Lord to whom nothing is impossible may continue strengthening the fruit of their labor here on earth, that even as we see whatever existed, whatever is existing, we may remember them, and that we may continue the work the good Lord began in them. Bless the work they have done, bless their families, may their souls, dear Lord, rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Sasa wakati umefika wako kushika nilicho nacho Kwa we mwaniende kwa mungu nitoe za wadi Sasa wakati umefika wenda mbele za mungu wangu Kaone nilivyo wanda za wadi ya leo Nitawami ya wanda kwa kera Kwani mungu wewe wanijua mimi siwezi hata kueleza Na kusihi sana baba unipoke Nikawie na baraka niwe sana As we offer this Bible and breviary, we ask God to open the hearts of each Benedictine to listen actively and attentively to the Word of God. The next gift is the rule of our Holy Father, Saint Benedict. It is presented by our Benedictine sister. Two, one. Prefer nothing whatsoever to Christ from the rule of Saint Benedict, the verse that sums up the rule of life that Benedict prescribed for his followers. This is the rule that provided the anchor for the Benedictine missionaries and propelled them to set and reach out in all parts through observing stability, fidelity, and obedience. Offering this rule, we pray for all the Benedictine throughout the world that the Lord may keep them stable and steadfast in their vocation. The next gift that is presented, it is a hoe that is the jembe and the farm produce. It is presented by Brother Philip OSB and Sister Valerie OSB. Driven by the Benedictine motto, Ora et Labora. 
The Benedictine monks and nuns not only pray, but they work too. St. Benedict holds, they are truly monks if they earn their living through the work of their hands. As we offer this farm produce, we ask God to bless the work of all believers in the world. The next gift is water, presented by Postland Paul. Water is a symbol of life. Water is a very essential and, a basic, and basic in our lives. When we see water, we see life. With this golden jubilee, we also celebrate and we launch our water branded that will nourish our lives every day. The next gift we are presenting is the animal, the calf. It is presented by Brother Andrew OSB and our farm workers. The calf, the calf represents the livestock keeping that is part and parcel of the Benedictine way of life. Livestock sustains our lives here in the monastery. We get so many produce. That is milk, beef, pork, chicken, meat, and many other farm produce. As we present this gift, we ask God to bless the work of the Benedictines and the work of all the believers in the world. Oh, 
sore za wali sasa wakati umefika kwenda na mbele za Mungu wangu aone nilivyoanda za wali ya leo nitamwambia bwana pokea hiki kidogo nilichonacho kwani Mungu wewe wanijua
Rupi gembi obi la kushindwa. Hati kama shindano yali owe kwa mbele yetu. Na tupate pamoja nao. Ile tajila utukufuli lolo isilo haribika. Wanjia ya Kristo obwana wetu. Kwa hiyo, sisi nasi pamoja na malaika na malaika waku. Na umati mkubwa wa watakatifu. Tuna kuimbi ya utenzi wa sifa. Tukisema ila mwisho. Mtakatifu na kila kiumbe kilichombwa nawe kina kusifu kwa haki. Maana kwa njia ya mwanao bwana wetu Yesu Kristo na kwa uwezo tendaji wa roho mtakatifu unavitia uzima vitu vyote na kuvitakatifuza. Wala huachi kukusanya watu kwako ili toka mawio ya jua hata macho yake na safi tolewe kwa jina lako. Basi bwana tunakusihi kwa unyenyekevu vipaji hivi ambavyo tumekutolea ili uvitakase upende kuvitakatifuza kwa roho huyo huyo ili viwe mwili na damu ya mwanao bwana wetu Yesu Kristo aliyetoa moro tuadhimishe mafungo hapo Maana yeye mwenyewe usiku ule alipotolewa alitoa mkate na akikushukuru aliubariki akaumeni na akawapa wafuasi wake akisema Waeni mle nyote huo ndio mwili wangu utakaotolewa kwa ajili yenu Hivyo hivyo baada ya kula akitoa kikombe na kukushukuru alikubariki na akawapa wafuasi wake akisema Waeni mnywe nyote hiki ndicho kikombe cha damu yako damu ya gano jipya na la milele chakae mwagika kwa ajili yenu na kwa ajili ya wengi kwa maandaleo ya dhambi Wageni hivi kwa ukumbusho wangu
Marie Bwana. Tunapoadhimisha ukumbusho wa mateso ya mwanao yale tai uokovu pamoja na ufufuko wake wa ajabu na kupaa kwake mbinguni na tunapo utazamia ujio wake wa pili tunakutolea kwa shukrani sadaka hii iliyo hai na takati tunakuomba uiangalie matoleo ya kanisa lako na kwa kumtambua yeye aliye kafara hai ulitaka kutulizwa kwa sadaka ya kifo chake tujalie sisi tunaotiwa nguvu kwa mwili na damu ya mwanao na kujazwa roho wake mtakatifu Pate kuwa mwili mmoja na roho moja katika Kristo. Yeye atufanye sisi tuwe kwako sadaka timilifu ya milele. Ili tuweze kupata ulithi pamoja na wateule wako. Kwanza kabisa pamoja na bikila maria. Mwenye heri, mama wa mungu. Na mtakatifu Yusufu mume wake huyo bikila. Na mitume wako wenye heri, mashahidi wako watukufu. Takatifu Benedicto na mtakatifu Scholastica. Na watakatifu somo zetu, na watakatifu wote ambao tunategemea pata daima msaada wa maombezi yao mbele zako. na kuomba e bwana huyu aliye kafara na upatanisho wetu arete amani na wokovu duniani kote upende kulimarishia kanisa imani na mapendo kanisa lako hapa duniani ninalo safiri hapa duniani pamoja na mtumishi wako baba mtakatifu wetu Francisco askofu wetu Filipo Anyoro E pamoja na maaskofu wote, makreo wote na watu wote unaowafanya kuwa taifa lako. Sikirise kwa wema sara ya jamaa hii iliyopo hapa mbele yako. E baba uliye mtakatifu kwa huruma yako. Uwakusanye kwako wanao walio tawanyika popote duniani. Uwapokee kwa wema hao wako katika ufalme wako ndugu zetu marehemu asawa missionari walio tutangulia wale walianishisha maisha haya ulio tujalia ya kitawa na wote walioaga dunia wakiwa na wamekupendeza nasi tunatumainia katika ufalme huo ili pamoja tu usibishwe milele kwa utukufu wako kwa njia ya bwana wetu Yesu Kristu ambaye kwa njia yake unatujaria ulimwengu mema yote. Kwa njia yake Hapa moja na ena na liyake Wewe mungu baba mwenyezi Atika umoja wa roho mtakatifu Unapata eshima yote na utukufu Ile le na mile agizo la mokozi wetu na tukifuata mafundisho yake ya kimungu tunathubutu kusema baba yetu ulie mbinguni jina lako itukuzwe ufalme wako ufike utakale ulifanyike duniani kama mbinguni utupeleo mkajo ito kila siku sofane makosa yetu 
He Bwana tunakuomba utuokoe katika maombi yote. Jalie kwa wema amani maishani mwetu. Sudi kwa msaada wa huruma yako. Tupolewe daima na dhambi wala tusifadhaishi na jambo lolote. Tunapotazamia tumaini lenye heri na ujio wa mokozi wetu Yesu Kristo. He Bwana Yesu Kristo uliyewaambia mitume wako Amani yangu na wapa Amani na wachieni amani yangu na wapa Usizitazame dhambi zetu ila tu imani ya kanisa lako Pende kulijalia amani na umoja kama yalivyo mapenzi yako Unayeishi na kutawala milele na milele Amani ya Bwana iwe daima nanyi Mpeane amani. Ya 
wake Mungu mwenyezi baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu iwashukie na kukaa nanyi daima Katanga sengeli ya Bwana Tumshukuru Mungu Naomba tuketi Let's take our seats kindly please God is good Let me see those who are waving the golden jubilee greetings Sherehe tunayo ama tuna Thank you very much. Kipindi hiki ni kipindi cha entertainment. Na mwanzo kabisa natumai the OSBs, the monks and the nuns are not tired. You have the second chance.
They spend the first night under a tree. After some time, with the help of a monk called Romanus, Benedict found a cave at Subiaco. He wanted to pray for those who did not bother to pray for themselves. After some years, the villagers discovered him while hunting. And very soon, people began coming to him to hear the word of God and about him. And as a community, they came up to Benedict in the forest and begged him to be their abbot, accepting it as a will of God. He followed them and became their abbot, but in a very short time, the monk wanted to kill him because for Benedict to be as tend sanctity was his main goal. Then he returned back into the forest as a hermit. Soon a king and old men wanted to live like him, but they did not know how to read or write, but only Benedict himself drew them. They were now living as brothers and Benedict was their abbot. They called him Father Benedict though he was never a priest, but because of his love, care and concernment for each one of them, Benedict wrote the rule of his monastery called the rule of St. Benedict which will help the monks to live as a united family and to live a real life of holiness. These rules have made the church continuous and most of the congregation rules are based on the rules of St. Benedict. Benedict had a twin sister called Scholastica, who became the abbess and is now a saint in the church. She died five weeks before her brother. Benedict's neighbor had prayed very much, many sacrifices and promises. Benedict died at the age of 67 and was colonized. The Benedictine has given over 24 popes, 460 bishops, 5,000 saints to the Mother Church. The first Benedictine to go out of Italy as missionary was Placid, and a group of monks whom Benedict entrusted with care. Later on, was St. Maurus, and a group of monks went to France. Fifty years inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Benedictine came to Kenya as the Holy Spirit inspired St. Paul to come over the Macedonia. Thank, Thank you. you. We celebrate Jubilee.